Fair enough, folks. Let's go to the next property. Okay, property number five. It says, if A divides B and A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero, then, then what happens? Then A is A has to be less than or equal to B. Okay, A has to be less than or equal to B. You can check with an example. What's an example? Let's take an example. So example could be let's say a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 24. Clearly a divides b as 8 divides 24 but 8 is less than 24. Right so hence this holds. This holds. Let's say let's take another one 45 and b is equal to 15. Clearly 45 doesn't divide 15. Right. If it is not dividing, there is no possibility of 45, you know, uh, anyways, 45 is less than a 45 is greater than 15. Correct. So hence, if something is dividing some other integer, then that divisor has to be lesser than the dividend. That's for sure. But how do we prove it mathematically? So let's prove it. Let's prove it. So proof is something like that. Again, we will go by the basic definition of the divisibility. So you'll get X as an integer x is an integer right i hope there is no difficulty in understanding this x is oh, sorry x is x is an integer okay let me write it in a fair manner x is an integer clear so my friends b by a is equal to x Right now, b by a is an integer, and since since a is greater than zero, b is greater than zero. Therefore, the 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 quotient b by a has to be greater than zero, and b by a is an integer, isn't it? Because b by a is x. B by a is equal to x is equal to an integer, and it is a integer which is greater than zero, guys. Right, greater than zero. Right, because b and a both were positive, so that means b by a can be either one or two or three or four or five or so on and so forth. Right, so right, so b by a is either one, two, three, four, or what, something like that. That means b by a is clearly greater than or equal to one. Right, either one, two, three, four, like that. That means b is greater than or equal to a. If you multiply the inequality by a positive quantity a from on both sides, so you'll get b is greater than a. So hence proved. Right? Fair enough. Next is the one more property, and this is if m is not equal to zero, not equal to zero, and a divides b, then this implies this implies and is implied by and is implied by and is implied by what m a is factor of m b or m a divides m b now what does this mean as in this means uh, this implies and is implied by what does this mean this means that if this holds true, then this will hold true, where m is an integer, m is an integer, okay, m is an integer, mm -hmm. in fact, m need not be an integer, m could be anything, right, so m could be anything, you need not be an integer, where, but only criteria is m must not be equal to 0, right, m could be anything, right, and if this is true, then if this is true, then this holds. And if this holds, then this is true. This is what is meant by implies and implied by. Both ways it is true. That means if A divides B, then MA divides MB. And if MA divides MB, then you can say A divides B. Right? Clear? This is what it means. Let's take an example. 3 divides 21. 
right? So 3 into 7 divides 21 into 7, which is quite true, right? No problems at all. So 4 divides 24 and let's say um, 8 divides 48. So hence this come this means this why because this is 4 into 2 divides 24 into 2 quite true so we are seeing that it is quite true let's try to prove it very very simple again so you can say what will you say here you will say that a divides b that means b is equal to ax again for some integer x every proof starts like that Okay, that means I can write, I can multiply both sides by a non zero quantity. So MB or BM is equal to MAX or BM is equal to AM times X. Correct. That means AM is equal to or AM not equal to AM divides AM divides BM. Clear. So this is the one way is proven. Let's say the other way is also true. So let's say let's say if B uh, A M divides B M. Sorry, B M. If A M divides B M, then we can say B M is equal to A M times some x, where x is an integer. Isn't it? So we can say B M by m is equal to ax m is not zero so i can cancel m so hence b is equal to ax therefore we can declare that a divides b so both ways it's true that means if a divides b then am divides bm and if am divides bm then a divides b so this is what the six sub parts of this theorem are so i would recommend that all of you uh, can just jot them down the results at least at one place so that it becomes easier for you to solve problems and